velvet's very luxury. Mm -hmm. Very soft, very flush. What makes our caskets different is we put Velcro on the back to hold the drop. We put Velcro on, Velcro on the corner for the blankets. This way when you drape the blanket over. Oh, here it is. I'm going to drop the blanket over. There's a Velcro here and we can join them together to keep that edge nice and straight because that service is going on and people are leaning on the casket and stuff this could move so with the velcro there to hold it in place it makes a nicer casket <laughs> normally because this is such a thick quilted blanket normally we would have a rod in here to also keep this straight it's not needed on this. This is more of a higher end blanket. It's very thick. Now, inspecting this casket, I found a quality issue problem here. Where you're seeing the glue seam, in which case I would reject it. Okay? And it comes all the way around the corner to here. And this is a solid walnut casket, so because it is such a high end casket, here again, you can see the glue joint, which I would have to say no. They would, they would have to then replace the whole lid, or really they would have to replace the bolt lid because what's important is the wood grain matches. Okay. The wood grain matches from lid to lid. So if they replace one lid, then these two lids would not match. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be, because this is black walnut, there is going to be some of this, which is really secretion from the oil of the wood. But it's very rare. Here is wood fill, so again, I would reject it. Okay, when I inspect the casket, I always walk feel the edges because sometimes the eyes miss things. Here there's wood fill where they join the two lids together and the color is not matching properly. Again, I would fail this. This is wood fill, which should not be, should have been caught. Also, the joint here, I would have also caught. Okay, so this is something the customer would not get. Then when I'm done walking around the casket, just by walking around the casket, my hands lead the way, my eyes follow the hands, and this is how I find the problems. Then I go into the crown, and again, I use my hands to find things because my eyes are following my hands. If you stand from a distance and look at this casket, casket, looks good, but anything from a distance looks good. Then when I'm done with that, then I start with the body, and again, I go up and down. Here there's a, again, where they join the glue and showing, we need to make that correction. So then I would walk, go up and down, I see they were missing color, missing color, missing color. So these are things that I would mark with tape, so this way they can go back and make sure it's right. They got a little scratch from putting the hardware on, so they would need to correct that. Visual is the most important. Here, again, I use my hands because the casket's nice and smooth, but I feel a rough edge here, which means then I have to have them come back and smooth that out. And is this the same process you use for every style of cabinet? For every casket. And again, colored match. Every cast, because I find, see, if you stand from a distance, you'll miss this stuff. 
you know, because you look at it and you go, oh yeah, it looks good. But because I, I feel the casket and I look at the casket by following my hands, then I'm able to find these areas that are problems. Which again, now, this is a reject. They would have to remake the whole casket. Remake, remake this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they sell it to somebody else. They're not going to sell it to me. Which means this is what my customers are not going to get. Not going to find. Okay? But still, since I'm looking at this casket, I'll see what other problems I have. Because at the same time, when I find these issues, I can train the factory to look for it. That's just dirt. Yeah. Because part of my process is also teaching the factories to do a better job. Yeah, I'm missing color. And how long have you been in inspecting caskets missing over here in color. China? Uh, I've been doing this now for over five years. I call myself a risk manager because I protect the client's investment, which is the money they send. And I assure them that their products that they're going to get, they can take out of the box and use.